Welcome back, my friends. What are we working on today? It's time to get back to the Rolled Runner. More like the 440 for the Rolled Runner. This thing's been sitting on my floor, taking up space. Let's get her stuck on a stand, cleaned up, and let's do a backyard budget rebuild in a can. We know it's a good running motor. We don't need to tear into it. But it's got some leaky gaskets and stuff like that, and we can go ahead and address. Kind of got a head start on you. I've been pulling some stuff off here and there. Um, manifold, starter, stuff like that. That thing is bending right right now. All right, well, let's put our hands underneath it. Use a screwdriver to roll this thing over, because I can't find my inch and a quarter socket, since the Mopar needs a like a, a battleship-sized bolt to hold the freaking balancer on this baby. Now, I know you guys are probably used to me kind of trashing non-GM stuff. I will be fair and objective. So far, I like it. There's a lot of engineering similarities between a Chrysler engine and uh, like a Buick Olds or Pontiac engine. It's kind of what it feels like to me. Now, this has a few things I like better, a few things I don't like, like the freeze plug behind the exhaust manifold. Genius. Overall, it's not bad. And that's how I've always felt about Chrysler engines. You know, the cars they go in, you know, they're kind of tin, cheap rattle cans. And that's what they were meant to be. Uh, you know, like your Dodges, your Plymouths, and stuff like that. It, you know, they weren't meant to be like a luxury car or anything. It was meant to be a cheap car that went fast, or a cheap car that anybody could afford just to drive every day. You know, for like a Dart or a Valiant, that kind of thing. Shifter cable out of that RV. That thing was 14 feet long or something like that. We don't, we don't need that. But I just got all the torque converter bolts out of her. All we gotta do is take out a couple of bell housing bolts, and then I'll wrestle this big old sucker off of here. This thing's a grease pit. I mean, holy cow, she's been leaking for a while. Well, it don't get much easier than that. Aha, we're all ready to rock to put this baby on the stand. Now, some of you guys who have watched for a little while might recognize this stand as the one we rebuilt JD's FE Ford on. And you might remember how much I just love it from yellow parts company not the one with my last name it's garbage it's absolute garbage but have you guys priced an engine stand lately they are crazy so i guess we're going to use this piece of crap i mean a uh, quality thing some of you guys may have been around even longer and remember when i took the 383 out of that fury and then put it on a yellow parts company engine stand a better one than this one and it snapped off and broke so i'm sure that surely won't happen twice will it yellow parts company oh my god look at that Ugh. 440 or 383 or 394 are huge engines but if you advertise a thing at a thousand pounds well that motor doesn't weigh that much it's well under that probably 700 or so if you do that it probably ought to hold a thousand pounds tell me or if you're asking me i can tell you right now there's no way i'm gonna be able to roll this thing over by myself but anyway she's on there i'm probably going to hit the hay for the night i'm going to leave this hooked up overnight just in case something goes south now i'm back out here after work today trying to work that overtime keep money rolling in to keep this whole operation going but you can help with by uh, subscribing liking sharing commenting the video and joining the low buck club right below the video where it says join for 99 cents a month you know maybe i can work a couple less saturdays and sundays to try to keep this train on the rails all right so we're ready to go i don't know how far we're going to get today there's all kinds of stuff we still got to strip off of this thing motor mounts got to come off all these mystery hoses and stuff need to come off whatever that thing is I'm going to leave all this throttle linkage and kick down linkage alone up here because it is there and functional. Let's get it cleaned up, Krylon rebuild this bad boy, and throw it down the road. I did order some valve cover gaskets. I'm going to keep these giant motor mounts here. They might come in handy down the road. I'll do it with a wrench. I don't want to pull the fuel pump either. I don't want to do anything. It all works. I'm leaving it alone. Number one mistake people make when working on a car. Fixing what is not broken. Pretty sure I've been here before. I just pulled this light fuel light off, and that is a uh, quarter inch air hose uh, adapter, quick connect. I approve very strongly of this. However, that's probably like super restrictive. I mean, it did pull a motorhome around. Can't be that bad. So help me God if I have to put a fuel pump on this. Uh, shop is gonna go away. Now 
I just realized you gotta can't use the water pump housing from the RV dumps on a different side. So this is the 383 out of the Sport Fury, and I kept it around for parts. And I'm glad I did, because we need some. And I think this water pump housing will work. Ain't nothing gonna come apart easy on this thing. No shocker there. Oh God, it still had water. Are you kidding? Of course it had water. The only thing that's gonna suck here is it's got this freaking heater hose fitting that's right in the way of absolutely everything. I would like to tear this motor down, see if there's anything salvageable inside of it. I don't have any penetrating oil at all. Let's see if we can get lucky. Probably not. <sighs> that's not good. Well, we'll let her soak overnight. This is something I've used with little success. It's about 50-50 transmission fluid and lacquer thinner. It just shook up real good and it it is. Usually works pretty good. You know, watch it around JD's car here. Stuff will probably take the paint off. Soak all this, I guess. Just let that set on there overnight. I'm just going to give this thing like a pre-soak with this gunk. Just kind of let it chew on it overnight. Right. Will it do anything? I'm not really sure, but I bet it'll help us tomorrow. Normally, you guys have seen me use oven cleaner instead of engine degreaser. And oven cleaner is a lot of times superior. My Dollar Tree, by me, no longer sells oven cleaner. And if you buy oven cleaner, like, you know, the name brand stuff, it's like five, four or five bucks a can, and so is this. And there's a lot more in this than there is in oven cleaner. And it does probably work better. Or at least it's not made out of exclusively carcinogens like oven cleaner is. So I got the foamy kind, which is the best kind. Uh, they used to have a gel kind. It was really good. They quit use I haven't seen it anyway for a long time. Well, after two days of soaking, it worked. See that? The old uh, training fluid and thinner trick is pretty good. If I do say so myself. There you go. I'll fold it right on out. Well, you can tell that it's soaked right through the threads. They're wet. You can save yourself a dollar or two by just mixing up some of that. But now we should be able to get this water pump housing off. Voila! One water pump housing, straight off of that Fury. Being able to salvage this probably just paid for that whole car. Uh, it actually came apart fine. I don't see any damaged threads or anything, so... One step closer right there. JD out here helping me clean this thing up. I did go ahead and order an oil pan for it because I found one cheap. Uh, I still got to get a pickup for it. I wasn't sure which one to buy. I'll probably have to get the pan and measure it to figure out what it is. It was $66, which was much cheaper than every other oil pan I found, which means it's probably terrible. Before we get too carried away on cleaning this thing, we're going to go ahead and strip off water pump housing down so we can clean it real good because it is full of stuff. Is that thermostat any good? Oh yeah, it's full of spiders. I bet it's fine. Save three dollars, you know. That rubber is probably about as hard as Kevlar. One of those. Oh yeah. Hose this thing down with some more engine degreaser. I'll probably get the whiz wheel out. I don't know. Clean her up the best we can get it, right? It's got the foamy kind. Oh wow. Fancy. So does the transmission. But uh, what I'm going to do next is take some brake clean because I noticed we probably got a little bit of water in the cylinders and stuff. Well, or in the uh, exhaust ports, not the cylinders. Mm -hmm. Spray a little brake clean in there and it'll help dry them out. Because as the brake clean evaporates, should bring the water with it. I don't know though. Kind of just spitball in there. It's actually been painted a couple of times. I was noticing that this motor's been into, which is either got the uh, still peeling and flaking. I tried to blast that and it just wouldn't come off. And that's either a good thing or, you know, somebody like me rebuilt it, which is a bad thing. We'll just ignore that for now and try to get this thing dried up so we can paint it. Just giving it a once over with brake clean will kind of make sure it's degreased. You can see the water beating off of it. That means there's still oil on it. Maybe it's got an RV cam. Now that we've effectively created a giant environmental hazard, we'll let her dry. Oh, 
I got JD yanking the plugs out. So I had a big old brain fart and didn't plug off the EGR on it, which of course leads A directly into uh, this bank. Uh, I think this cylinder right here, uh, the exhaust side of that, and also, you know, right into the intake where I was blasting 3,000 psi of water at. So we're going to yank all the plugs out of it and roll it over a few times and, you know, spray a little oil in there. Just out of an abundance of caution because, you know, I have had tremendously good luck with engines, you know, locking up. Yeah. Um, only every single no. one I've bought since starting YouTube. But only every one. So, you know, that's pretty good. Except this one. Wait, this, this is the only good one. Well, let's keep it that way. See the water dripping down there? We dodged us some bullet points. <clears throat> let's just put a little oil in these just to be safe. Ooh. Okay, I guess we need oil to do that. We got some weird mix of ATF and two-stroke oil in here. Oh, god dang it. Sure. And now we're gonna get oil all over the engine. Did I really just use all this? I really did. It's gonna start the plugs in by hand, seal them up for now so we can paint. These plugs need replaced anyway, they're pretty burned up. Somebody didn't gap them, like at all. Look at the gap there. It's amazing this thing ran as good as it did. Just goes to show that it literally doesn't matter. Old engines really just don't care. As long as they got gas and oil, the yeah. rest of it's pretty much optional. Well, it looks dry enough to me. What do you yep. think? Yep. So we're going to paint this baby a uh, hemi orange, I think. Give her that real authentic Mopar orange color. because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be blue in these. Really, I went out on a limb and I paid the big bucks to get hemi orange. You're welcome for that Mopar guys watching the channel. I... For hemi orange. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have cleaned that valve cover better. Wait. Well, I gotta take the valve covers off anyway to put gaskets on them. So oh, okay. Maybe I'll just do it then. Look at that Magnum 440 right there. Mm -hmm. I, well, maybe it was only the Magnum 440s that were orange. I don't remember. But that would have been an optional engine in this car. And it's a motorhome 440, so it's got six pack rods in it. So it's basically a Magnum. I just need the six pack for it. So go ahead and donate one of those to me if you, uh, you know, if you got one. Paint it all orange and then we'll go back and uh, paint, you know, do some details. Yeah. This time on Bonehead Cars, Clark loses his mind. What are you doing? What color is that? That is not code 37XYZW. That is Chevy orange. What are you no, doing? What are you doing? Why are you painting it with a spray can? instead of delicately mixing the exact factory mixture of it. Oh my God, it is not WXY7W orange, okay? You're fine. Will Bill Mandorf lose his job once and for all? Don't make me fight you with karate moves, because I will. I'm going to fight you with karate moves. You're fine. You're fine. Just like you were fired last like, week. Why are you still here? We are going to lose the shot. The channel's gone. It's all gone. I'm so stressed, and I'm so dramatic. Oh, my God. Where did the shop go? Find out next week. Bonehead Cubs. And boom. One 440 Magnum coming right up. We'll come back and paint these little details. Black, silver, whatever. Kind of use the orange as a uh, base. That is going to look sweet sitting in that piece of junk. Also, I painted the distributor because Chrysler Electronic Ignition going... Bye bye. And we didn't paint the oil pan because obviously we need to change that anyway. This might be a problem. So we got a couple options. We could like put a piece of hose on here and then silicone a bolt into it, you know. Oh god. It's moving the entire thing. Oh, man. Problem is if I go too crazy here and I end up putting a hole in this or something. Then we're screwed. And uh, I don't want to be screwed. That baby's tight, man. So I could try to take a chisel <laughs> and drive it out. I guess we'll try it. You know what? No. We're just going to glue a piece of hose on it, I think. And then we'll just forget about it. 
Might be kind of ugly, but whatever. Go ahead and zip off this kick down linkage, throttle valve, or whatever it is. We'll give that a nice spray of its own. Put the motor mounts on it, and that's pretty much all I got for this at the moment. I got a distributor coming and a few things. I guess I should have taken this off before, but you know, hindsight and all that. I suspect this is supposed to be silver. Or it's now chrome or something. I didn't realize this was chrome paint. So now we got we got the upgraded version. This thing's got 57 horsepower now. Look at that. Look at that freaking style. Let's go ahead and jazz up the oil fill and the breather over here too. Oh, black would be better for those. These are the motor mounts I salvaged off of the Furies 383. Let's go ahead and paint them up. And the part you actually replace is this little guy here. That was available at O'Reilly. I don't know which way it goes, but I'm going to guess. Oh yeah, they got this nice little locking dimple here. And then it just slides up and locks into that dimple. Pretty smart. There's a lot of things on the Mopar here that I've been pretty impressed with, actually. rebuilding these engine mounts right now. Those things are like 80 bucks a pair just for the bracket for the mount. Now the mount is only like $5. You have these, you're in good shape. So that Fury just keeps on paying, man. Let's add some pizzazz to the oil fill cap here. Since we'll probably be reusing all of this because I am cheap. And you gotta remember, guys, that my budget for this build is $3,000. To take this Roadrunner from, you know, literally out of a junkyard to running, driving, somewhat safely. So every dollar penny we pinch here is gonna make a world of difference later. Go grab us some lunch, be right back. JD's gonna gap the plugs. We're gonna go 50 thousandths on them because we got an electronic ignition coming. These are the wrong plugs. Now since we don't have the right plugs, go ahead and put the motor mounts together. They go like that. You bolt that sucker down, and you're ready to rock. At least I think it goes on like that. I wrote passenger on one of them and then I painted it black. Mm. You know, but I like smart. I like my life extra challenging. Yeah. I don't actually know anything about vehicles. I just guess every day. No, no, this is the passenger side. Okay. Okay. You guys can go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think they go like this. And maybe I don't know. That seems right. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. It's all wonky, and crooked, and terrible. That's good, that's good. That's what you like to see. Oh, I'll just get them as tight as I can by hand. Surely all three of them won't fall out. I think this is as far as we can go today. But you can see, you know, we got the uh, pumpkin effect going on here with black and orange. Well, we got our motor mounts on both sides. Inching our way closer to putting it in here. Well, I am just still struggling with parts, man. I'm waiting on stuff. I don't know what oil pan this thing's supposed to take. I'm gonna try to figure that out this week. I don't know what it is about getting parts these days. It's tough. Let's go ahead and throw valve cover gaskets on it. These are some antiques here, man. Roll. Made in the USA. Made 1999. I was six when these were made. Let's see how she looks inside. Checking out the Rocker Valley can be a pretty good indication on whether something's been maintained like ever. Somebody seems to have painted them on. I don't know who was that one. Oh, duh, I missed the bolts. I just ain't firing on all cylinders. I'm in GM mode. Well, <laughs> come on. Ugh, oh, they glued them on. You bastards. Dang, it's spotless in there, though. Holy cow. Well, that makes me happy. Looky there. This baby's clean enough to eat out of. I can see right here is why the damn thing leaked. It's kind of a rookie mistake, but amateurs do this all the time. You got a leaky valve cover, and then they just start hogging down on it, trying to get it to stop. And boy, that ain't gonna do nothing except for bend the hell out of it. Both of these. No bueno. Further confirming my suspicions that I've worked on this before, there's a 10 millimeter bolt just shoehorned in here. Ah, oh, yeah, pointy tip to cut its own threads. No different side, same story. Too clean to be true. They've been clean. And in here, same thing. Clean as could be, except they love the silicone. I mean, look. I'm going to try not to make an environmental spill on this thing out of cork or neoprene or whatever this is. Hard, broken, bad, yuck. Normally I just assault it with the wire wheel, but I don't really want to fill what appears to be a very clean engine uh, with rubber, cork, crap, gasket, stuff, burned, bad thing. We're just going to kind of take our time. There's a freaking zip tie in here. I've been here, man. Look at that. That's a... 
Oh my god. What do I do to deserve these engines? I, I, what, did, what did I do? Where did I go wrong? You guys know who these people are. Well, you should. Kevin, Mook, Hi. Junkyard Diggs. Yeah. They stopped by with a cutlass. They're driving back from Texas. I mean, and 600 miles, this is the best we could do. Like, yeah, uh, fine, we'll stop. Yeah. Well, so. uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We're kidding. We actually pushed really hard to make it here to meet this man and see I don't, the I don't know why. calamity he constructs here. <laughs> he offered his beer. That is usually That's the key to all friendships. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just wanted to pop you guys in on that. You see how absolutely destroyed these rails are on these valve covers? Probably need to replace, to be honest with you, but... I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is stick a screwdriver handle. It's nice and round. It'll fit right up in here. And then I'll take my body hammer and just tap them down until they're flat again. Voila. Leak free. We got the valve covers cleaned up again and shot them with some black out here. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to look kind of like a pumpkin, but it's better than all orange. Chrome valve covers, not in the budget. This is a ultra Chinesium ready to run distributor. I got it for $52 on eBay. I'm sure it's just dandy. What else do we get? We got a few parts today, finally. Tell Pro Gasket said, I don't mess around with that. I got this oil pan for 66 bucks off of eBay because it was like a closeout thing. Sure looks like a passenger car pan to me, so. I got a pickup coming. I got all the brake stuff coming for the car. We're, we're diving in. We're, we're getting after it. Let me go ahead and put the water pump housing doohickey mabobber on here. I use black RTV on everything. It's kind of like Frank's hot sauce. I put that shit on everything. So just a little coating. Anytime you got a cast piece that you're putting on, especially one that's apparently been under water like that 383, smear you some RTV on it. Fill in those porous gaps and, so, and such. Hey, washers. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll go get it. Smearing it on. Smearing it on. Right, here we go. I'm just gonna bolt this on. It's like at least two of the bolts we picked out will fit. Oh. Just over here painting the water pump with tractor paint with a paintbrush. Because we're on a budget. A real budget. Not the federal government budget like other YouTube channels. We yank the old dizzy. Only thing we need to note is that the rotor is pointing that way. Also, did you look at the rotor? I just, how did I miss that? How was this thing running? Look at that. That's That was like that. It was all burned like that. That rotor's been bent for a long time. How did this run? <laughs> it was bent totally flat. I didn't do that. I just took the cap off for the first time. Anyway, the good thing on a Chrysler is there's only two ways to put the distributor in, right or wrong because they're a blade type, there's no gear to mess with. So we know the rotor is pointing that way. All we gotta do is put the new distributor in with the rotor pointing that way. So we yank that out of there. Don't worry, hardcore Mopar people, I'm not throwing it away. Now we'll stab this guy in, theoretically. If, you know, whatever child put this together, put it together correctly. Screwdriver down in here. Trying to make this look like that, kind of, sort of, maybe. Flashlight. Oh, I can see it all right. There we go. It was just kind of sticky. There. Good enough. Twist to get to where we need to be from there, probably. And when I'm wrong, we'll do it again. There we go. One dizzy. We're making progress. Well, today my plug wires came in. But so did the oil pump pickup. But before I do any of that, while I have the valve cover off, I want to verify that it is on top dead center. So I know where to put number one. How I did that is I just rolled it over till the mark said zero, right? And then I give both of the uh, intake and exhaust valves on number one a little shake. I can tell that they're not compressed. So that should be top dead center. It should be on the base circle of the camshaft. Not gonna put the wires on just yet. I just want to get the cap where it's going to go, and I'm just going to mark which post is going to be closest to number one. And a Chrysler rotates counterclockwise, so 
I'm gonna try to lead it just a little bit if I can. I'm gonna go ahead and put the gaskets on the uh, new gaskets on, our vintage 1999 gaskets. We're gonna party like it's 1999. The difference of what they did and what I will do is yes, I use a decent amount of RTV on the valve cover, but that's it. I'm not going to put any on the head surface. That way, if we gotta get back in there, it won't be too much of a disaster. Valve covers are on. The black looks pretty good, other than the jack-o'-lantern effect. I broke one bolt off in it, because that's kind of what I do if you've watched the channel. Well, I never drained the oil out of it when it was in the motorhome. I'm sure there won't be any surprises. Okay, that's 90% gasoline, I think. Oh, God. God, it's thin. I don't see any sparkly stuff, so, I mean, that's always good. Oh, uh, how big of a bucket you think that is? Oh, cause it's oh my God, get something else. Oh. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, out back? Oh, yeah, all right. Oh, God. We're halfway there. It might be okay. It might be okay. It might be all right. <laughs> um. Oh, God. What are we going to do with that? Oh, I don't no. know. Oh, no. It's got to be running out soon, right? Yeah. Okay, there it goes. Okay. Oh, I don't think it's going anywhere. I hope not. God, what a, that'd be an ecological disaster. No. Go ahead and put our water pump on. We'll put it, you know, with the, with the side that says top. We'll, we'll make that one the top. You know. Yeah, top to the top. That's uh, kind of an amazing thing. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, no. Pull the pan off of it like this because I can't roll this engine over. So. Still got another bolt on your side. It's a little chunky, but you know, I don't know. That's even worse. Oh, never mind. That's the wind strike. Do these scraping, and I'll go ahead and start our new pickup in. There it goes. Is it, that's not right. <laughs> Is that tightened all the way? Oh, there. Okay. Okay, that was weird. Hit another roadblock. This pan doesn't fit. I tried it with the windage tray on it. It helps some, but with this pickup, it can't come far enough forward because the pickup is hitting the back of the sump. I went ahead and ordered a six quart pan uh, to use instead of the five quart pan that I mistakenly ordered or something. What we're gonna do today to wrap everything up here is throw some new plugs in it, which I realized these are tapered seat heads. They don't take the ceiling ring. And then I priced spark plugs, and they're like $3 a piece. And I said, nope, not for Chinese garbage. So what did I buy? On eBay, I found these new old stock AC plugs here. They're R43TS, which is R42TS, sorry. A little bit colder, but they're the old green ACs. They're made in the USA. I got all eight of them for $19. Uh, and you're not going to find a better spark plug than this literally anywhere. Uh, there's nothing made in this country anymore that I'm aware of. Except for these Moroso plug wires, which were the cheapest plug wire I could find. And they're made in the USA. Go figure. 42 bucks. They're a custom set. You got to make them yourself, but that's no biggie. That's how I prefer to do them. Then I bought the cheapest, most garbage coil I could find for $20 on eBay, but it's chrome, so you know it doesn't work. It came with the right bracket to bolt onto it, so that's cool. I bought this genuine, pure grade Chinesium dipstick here. Shocker, it didn't fit. So, I gotta press it in there. And they're supposed to press, but not quite as much press as this one seems to require. You gotta get these pressed in, and then you can bolt them to the motor mount. So what I do is stick a screwdriver in the top of the dipstick. Then you can hammer a little bit safer. And then when you get her down far enough, take you a flat blade and try to get it the rest of the way down. Just bolt it right up, I'm sure it won't, and 
There. Yeah, something like that. Now, but give me a tube RTV there, and we'll just smear some around the outside of it, you know, okay. just to feel better about it, but it won't actually do anything. Pretty difficult, you know. You put the red one to the positive, and the, and then the black one to the negative. It's very difficult. Probably requires some kind of PhD. So, like most plug wire kits, this comes with eight wires of varying lengths and a DIY coil wire and they come with the spark plug end pre-installed. One, we marked one on the cap, is this guy. And once we start with him, then we're off to the races. Uh, he's kind of a medium length one, so we'll use this kind of medium length wire and run it up over the middle of the valve cover. I don't have enough hands. Okay, you want a sticker? There you go. Yeah. Run them down under here. You know, to make things pretty. They're too big for the factory looms. Oh. Now, regardless, we can zip tie to it. It'll be fine. I've showed it a hundred times. I don't use no fancy stuff. I use a little bit of silicone grease to put the boots on. And then I use a uh, just a razor blade to strip back the cable. And, you know, they have tools for this and stuff. And they're not expensive. You can buy them. Fairly cheap. But I'm, like, super cheap. So, you know, I will, of course, not be using them. And so I'll show you on the coil wire here that I just usually cut them back about an inch or so, run my razor blade very lightly. You don't want to nick the uh, impregnated carbon. Then I just kind of bend it back and forth until things happen. Then I grab it with my teeth and then voila, it is exposed. Most kits are gonna come with female and male cap fittings. Obviously we got a male cap, so we'll put that one back for now. And let's go ahead and do our uh, number one plug wire here. Take a little bit of grease, silicone or dielectric grease is, you know, best, but you could probably just spit on it or whatever. Slide the boot on all the way. It's easier if you put the boot on before you have the end of the wire trimmed. But, you know, I forgot to do it because, well, that's just kind of how it rolls. You know, try not to destroy the core of the wire. That's really all that matters. You can pretty well get away with doing anything else. As long as electricity goes zoom through it, you're in good shape. There's not a lot to mess up here. We're going to tuck the core of the wire back underneath here. And then I just take a regular old pair of pliers of any kind, pretty much anything that can squeeze something, including your teeth if you have to, and then I just squeeze it on there. It's that easy, and I've, knock on wood, or china, never had one of these fail actually, so doing it the way I do it, maybe it'll work for me, maybe it won't work for you. It's not really my problem, so, uh, you know, good luck. But boom there we go. We're going to snap it onto our number one. Huzzah. And there we go. Wires are on. A little sloppy over here, but I wanted to leave them a little bit loose until we get the timing, you know, until we figure out where we got a twist on it, and, you know, then we'll tie them the rest of the way up. I will say these Morosa wires came with, like, three really long ones, and then the rest are way too short. Uh, I, I didn't have to trim any of these, and that's not a good thing. Uh, I, I would much rather see just four long, or eight long wires and, you know, you just cut them where you want them. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to do it for this one. We didn't get the oil pan on it. We didn't get it put in the car. We didn't get the transmission put together. This whole thing is just kind of a headache. But I want to show you one thing. And that is I ordered a bunch of stuff from Rock Auto. Those are all brake parts. So we're going to make some progress on this. I promise. We got a few things coming up this month. It's going to be a little slow for about a month, but this winter, we're going to finish this. This is the winter project for the channel, I think. I'm just going to get the pan. I'm just going to toss it on here. We need to plug this EGR valve and stuff, but just little things for right now. And then I just want to put the motor in the car. That's all I want to do. I need to make some brake lines, throw the motor in, throw that trans in or a trans in so i have a trans from the 67 fury 727 and then i have the 727 out of that motorhome do you guys know if i can just change the tail housing or should i just try to use the fury's transmission four speeds out of the question unless somebody wants to donate one to me you know like a two thousand dollar transmission be my guest you cannot use the motorhome trans as is 
but if I can change the tail shaft on it, we can use it. So if you know, if you have some you know actual knowledge on that, I would appreciate it if you could guide me a little bit. I am new to the Mopar world. Remember to hit that like, hit that subscribe. Very important that you ring the bell uh, because I've noticed recently a lot of my videos aren't getting watched and I don't think it's because you guys aren't watching them. I think it's because you don't know they're there. I release at least once a week, sometimes two or maybe even three times a week. There's a lot of content out there. We have a huge backlog of videos. Help me out a little bit. Hit that bell and, you know, just tell your friends, share it around, share it on your Facebook page or whatever. And, uh, you know, let's try to spread the word a little bit. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying, guys. So, anyway, you guys have a good one. We'll see you.